never been so nervous in my whole life. We got uh, resin A, and then you got resin B. Uh, mix ratio one to one, that should be easy. Got a little container here, that should be easy. Basically, my goal is, is to fill this piece, this bottom piece of the rudder, which I think I can do and then take a break. This stuff sets quick, so I don't have a lot of room to fool around. It's expandable. It actually will, it'll create a chemical reaction where it'll heat up. So I, I, I really, I've never done this before. Worst thing that could happen is we end up uh, having to remove them. any mistakes I make. Let's hope not. One day I woke up and sailing turned me into a chemist. And then a physicist. And then a diesel technician. And oh yeah, an electrician too. All things are possible. They must be. When you become a sailor, failure isn't an option. I just, I just poured it in. I can't. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how to. Pour, I poured it in the next one, but I just poured it in. And look at it. It's starting to transform into the other color. Okay, I can't screw around. I gotta get back. In case you're just joining me, this isn't for you. It's for me. You got it? It's okay if you don't get it. Feel free to move on and find some other kind of clickbait. I'd like to think of this as an exercise for my own personal mental health. Like I said, it's for me. Are we clear? Okay, good. Now that we've got that straight, let me recap. Last spring, I bought a 45-foot sailboat without a single hour of sailing experience. I just knew that I could do it, and I knew I would love it. I can, and I did. But now I've got a major problem. I've got to rebuild the rudder. It's really become clear to me over the last couple of years that not only is there a group of pirates on the water, including marinas, other boaters, uh, insurance companies, finance companies, uh, you know, everything involved in boating and water is piracy everywhere. But there's also a group of land pirates. And uh, some people call them the mob. Some people call them uh, vigilantes, it just there's pirates everywhere, and they're after your money. Uh, and you just you, you just shared with me an example of a story that uh, really just hit right to that. And I just you just went through something, and uh, I thought it was fair that I asked you to to share the story uh, with the others. So bring me back. What happened a couple days ago? So, I ended up going out to uh, this town, and I was looking for the contractor who I've been consulting with for just about over a year now. And, I mean, the guy owes me literally 178000 So, it's not, we're not talking pennies. Chump change. We're talking a little bit of chump change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so I literally didn't even pull into the office parking lot. I pulled over to the side of the road because I was on a conference call. And all of a sudden, the conference call ended. And I started to drive away. And all of a sudden, this pickup truck, which I've never seen before in my life, and pulls it's a 45 right in front of me and cuts me off the road. I'm like, what the hell is this? And come to find out, because of the financial issues that the contractor that's supposed to be paying me is having, he took on a partner. I see. Yeah, well, the partner's a little unusual. Wow. He's Russian. 
And he has a big company in Fairfield County. Doesn't hire a single American. He's got all Mexicans working for him. And he, this guy took him on as a partner. So he cuts me off. He jumps out of his truck. And he starts threatening me. You gotta be kidding me. No. Now, in the second row of seats on the truck, he's got two of his thugs that were standing there backing him up through this whole situation. <laughs> Against you. Against me. You've had five strokes and you're... Eight strokes in five years. And you're barely able to walk. Right. And I'm still gimping around. And he literally threatens me. Well, little does this guy know. I mean, I was in the trash business and recycling business in Chicago. I've dealt with the Chicago mob when they had a strike because I came in and I serviced their customers and they got pissed. They actually burned down one of my facility in 13 trucks. It was only like $2.6 million worth of damage. Yeah. So, I mean, I was getting death threats at my house. I, you know, I just don't want to deal with that anymore. I'm, it's, I'm, it's too late. So, wait a minute. Listen, we, we go way, way back, okay? We've been to hell and back, okay? Yeah. We ran track together, high school, very little for many years. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're back. We've been aboard the vessel. We've gone to Florida. We've done everything together. Like, I know you. Okay, and for somebody to threaten you is absolutely, it's, it's insane. This is insane. Go ahead. I've never once in my life ever talked to this guy. He doesn't know me. He, we've never been introduced, and he's a new partner, and he owns 50% of the business now, and he's telling me I'm not going to get paid. I mean... I don't deal well with threats at all. I mean, I got, out of, I got out of the Jeep, I got running in his face, and I told him how the world works. And who knows? He may regret it one day, unfortunately. Um, so we're, we're both tied into similar situations where uh, either somebody owes us money or uh, work is done, in, in one particular case, on my vessel that I just thought was just outrageously priced and it, I just didn't get any value for my money. So um, either way, it's over money. Whether you're a land pirate or whether you're a, 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 an overwater pirate, um, you're dealing with arguments over money. It's very similar to uh, a time in place when we once used to throw spears at one another. We, we once to throw uh, clubs and rocks at one another. Now we're um, feigning, uh, almost uh, pretending that we're going to pay somebody and then we don't pay them. And so uh, there's, there's really no recourse unless you wanna to go to court, you wanna hire an attorney. And oftentimes it's very difficult to hire an attorney to defend yourself if you don't have anything lock clad in writing. Right. And so if you don't have it in writing, it almost doesn't exist. And even if it does, it's very difficult to collect. For example, I got it somebody that owes me $5,000. And even though I have it in writing, it doesn't matter because he doesn't have the money. So a judgment in court is worth the paper it's written on. Yeah, it's, it's worth it. default on it. Exactly. So it just can't, it doesn't have the money. So what, what's happening is we have created an economy and it's a society where uh, you, you, oftentimes you, the word of a client of a person is useless. And so this brings about this uh, visceral, deep down hatred that some people act out on and some people don't. Um, unfortunately, the people that act out on it, many of them are in prison. Right. And so we are given an opportunity now to make a choice. Do we, do, do we just have to accept it and let it go and try to fight it legally? Do you act out physically? And obviously if you do, you're dead. That part of our brain is still active. Act out physically. But you can't do this in no. this society. You can't. You're not going to get away with it. It's uh, very difficult to deal with. 
and deal with responsibly. Evidently, it's just come to my attention that last night I was uh, yelling and uh, well, I don't want to go too further into the description. I'm going to allow the person that actually just told me what she experienced to explain it. You're on the algorithm. Okay. So, what happened last night? Um, well, I was awoken to you yelling in a very angry and aggressive way. You were sound asleep and you were dreaming, but you were saying, I'll get you. And you were curled up next to me and your whole body was tense. And you repeated yourself several times and like your body for lack of something better to reference it to, kind of jumped. Um, and you were fighting something in your dreams. I don't know what it was. I'm so sorry for the interruption in your sleep. It's absolutely okay. I just laid there because I didn't want you to think I was the enemy. But this went on for probably, I don't know, 45 seconds, a minute. And you were, you were fighting something, determined to get them. dreams. I don't remember saying that. I don't remember it happening. In addition to actually sailing and the knowledge one gains in the act of utilizing those skills, there is another equally important school available, even while the vessel is up on the hard it's called Marine Weather Forecasting School. A tremendous amount of knowledge can be had with simply watching low pressure systems entering and exiting the region and the subsequent wave height, wave period and wave direction those powerful fronts create. Even today, March 13th, 2023, all of a sudden, those dreaded words, bomb cyclone, start to pop up all over my feeds. A weather phenomenon where the barometer drops over 24 millibars in just under 24 hours. It's like being sucked into a wind tunnel. Boats sink, people die, power is lost. This is an e -perb. Surprisingly, I've gone 10 years without one. The only reason there is one in my possession now is because it came with the boat I bought. It's been documented that cardinals mate for life. Ornithologists have studied this species and proven this to be true. But people are an entirely different species. I've always wondered, is it this fact about cardinals that has given evidence to support the theory that we humans should be monogamous as well? After all, a bird with its simple brain compared to us with enormous brains, well, we should be able to do something so simple as remain with one single partner. But I'm not so sure. People change. And I don't think it's realistic to require a human being to remain monogamous throughout their entire life. Okay, I realize I caught a lot of flack 
for doing this project in my fine little uh, co-op apartment. Yes. I know you're worried for my health. I know you're worried about me and you care about me, but I got this, okay? I got this. Don't worry, all right? I didn't do any major sanding here. I just did a little scratching of the fiberglass. But what I am going to do right now is, rather than traveling halfway across the country with this thing in the back of the truck, I'm going to put it out on the... I'll show you right here. I'm going to put this out here, and I'm going to do some sanding out here. Look at that. Gonna have to make room for it. There is room here. Gonna have to take the little lawn furniture out, but talking 10 feet, you're here. Makes more sense. It's a little chilly, but who cares? It's uh that'll pull it right back in before the snow. We got a storm coming, so uh you gotta be careful. I don't want this. This turned out to be a silly idea, but I had to try. The stuff puffed up so much, it was obvious it had to go, and I didn't want to sand it. Finally, I gave up, grabbed the sander, and went to town. The stuff came off very easily, and I realized, you know, I'm going to have to re-pour the whole thing with more of the urethane foam. Once I get all this super high stuff down, that's what I'll do. I'm starting to lose sleep over this whole process. I know I can do it, I believe I can do it, but my subconscious deep down tells me I'm gonna screw it up. It's fighting my conscious will to complete the project. All right, so it's obvious. I, I got my work cut out for me. I've started the sanding, as you can see right down in here. Uh, it's, you know, without a doubt, gonna take at least an hour or two to really get this thing down. But it, it's, it's doable. I got the right tools. I think I can do it. The key thing now is to just uh, try to get this thing knocked down right now. So I can have the peace of mind that tomorrow I can retune it, refine tune it, and then um, whatever areas that are too low, I can fill in and then uh, be ready for the next step, which is the fiberglass. I'm in the process of rewiring my brain. Everything up to now has led me to a place where I felt like I could not do this. I wasn't capable of doing this. A rudder on a sailing vessel is like an aqua dynamic underwater wing. It's as important to a sailor as a wing is to an airplane pilot. Except it must withstand water pressure eight times more powerful than the force of air. Additionally, it must be strong enough to handle the stress of the vessel's weight, plus that of the wind and current, and all of which ends up pressing on the 10 square foot area on the rudder. You do the math. 160 square feet of sail surface pressure and 24 tons of fiberglass, wood, and lead keel all pressing down on just 10 square feet. It's become quite obvious to me that 
becoming a boater, uh, no matter what it is, a power boat, a sail boat, 30 foot, 13 foot, 48 feet, you have entered the world of piracy. If you cannot uh, run at that pace of piracy, then you will get swallowed up by the other pirates. And they're all disguised. Some of the pirates look like marina manager somehow. I'm here to fix your boat. Others say, oh yeah, bring, bring that thing over here. I'll give you a price on that thing and I'll fix it. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. You are completely at their mercy. Once the boat is up on land, on someone's facility, it ain't coming off. They're not going to pick it up and put it back in the water so you can sail away until you paid your bill. Did you ever have that kind of experience? Um, life as we know it has changed. And yeah, pirates come in all shapes and sizes. The only way to handle a pirate, in my opinion, is to help them see that they're not a pirate. They are, as you are, a human being that is running a business that must maintain some status in the client's mind. It was the only technique I could pull out of the, the rabbit out of the hat. And it bought me maybe 8% in discounts. Nothing about got a bid on the house before I moved in for insurance for a year. Then they canceled it because I have a dog. Two quotes later, um, it went up by three times. And the house didn't change. But I did have one sales agent just be honest with me and she just said, listen, your house is bigger than what we normally carry and therefore we can't insure you. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. You know, a price comes in at X, mm -hmm. and within several months, it goes X times three? Yeah. Like, how does that happen? But back to the whole thing on getting a quote, which relates to this, is that many times, and again, this is in boating, piracy, I'm talking piracy, we can't, oh no, sir, we can't quote that, because we just don't know. We don't know what we're going to run into. We can't even estimate it which I understand you can't quote it because you can't see where those wires are going to run and what you're going to, but you've been doing this for how many years? You ought to be able to come up with what is a normal, here's what it would take when it was normal. Give me a price. Um, you know, it still has the same slate roof and the same brick walls and yada yada. So nothing changed except for you know, they tripled my, my costs. No matter what and how you slice it, COVID has changed everything. And as a result, we're all under stress. We are the organisms that are now under a stress like we have never been before. Um, and it exacerbates everything. If you were dealing with pirates from hell before, well, guess what? Now it's, it's tripled mm -hmm. because now they have Cerberus at the gate. Exactly. And so now you're in a situation where everything costs more automatically. People want more money because of inflation and you were already paying ridiculous amounts of money for anything to begin with if you were involved in boating. So now it's, it's, it's double and it's insane. And COVID has created a situation where at one point in time, there was not enough say work because everybody was hiding. Um, all of a sudden jobs were lost and there was, now we have the flip side of that. The stress is equally as uh, painful and as stressful because now there's twice as much and there's even less people in the workforce to do it because people retired and said, 
you know what? I'm done with this. This is ridiculous. I like kind of just hanging out. I'll just uh, collect a check from uh, Social Security. I won't go back to work or I'll just simply find another way to make a living. Or, you know what? I'll live with my family so I don't have a rent anymore. People have done that all over the country, which again, piggybacks more and more stress because now you have these open apartments, these landlords that are like, oh my God, how am I going to do that? What do they do? Jack up the rent. Our society has always been built on people that can pay and can't pay. Um, and human nature is to extract the most you can when available. I'm pretty sure I'm on the spectrum. I've been in and out of therapy over the years and no one ever identified me as so. Who's to say they were smart enough to see it? My girlfriend swears I'm not, but I'm not so sure. And sometimes I think maybe most of my friends are on the spectrum too. When I take a look at those who are around me and I compare them with my own situation, we all seem to have a lot in common. None of us seem to be doing so well in terms of long-term relationships. We've all at one point found ourselves caught out with some sort of a substance abuse problem. We all seem to only be able to stand each other for just a few years, and then we have to break apart. And one more thing, we all really love making music. Not like that really means anything, but it is a commonality between us all. Okay, this will just take a, a couple minutes, but basically everything that I thought I was doing properly before with these uh, little old fashioned was wrong, okay? My cousin was right. Everybody was screaming bloody murder. I gotta remove these little, these little yellow caps and I gotta heat shrink and maybe crimp these guys on so I can properly install the darn heater so uh, we don't uh, short circuit the gosh darn thing here. The question is, do I have to crimp this first and then try to, I think I'd like to try to crimp it. Crimp it right there and then we'll heat shrink it. Let's try that. I've never done anything like this before in my life. Soccer. Does that even crimp? Every single task oh, challenges me to no end. I do it right the first time. No, did it wrong. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. It's just the way it is. It's working. Okay. That'll just about do it for this episode of Scott Tucker's Algorithm. I hope you enjoyed it. Check back next week. Connections.